So normally with the pre-workout, I'll grab uh, like I am here, the beta alanine, which I've been doing for almost a month now, which I really like. The pump squared, which is just glycerol. That gives me a crazy coolness uh, when I'm training. But what I've been doing just for my leg days is uh, adding a little bit more caffeine in it since uh, you know, I, can, I can use it at least on my leg leg sessions. So one scoop of the uh, Christopher's Secret Stuff, which is part of the Thavage line Raw has, has uh, I want to say it's just under 150 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, 130. Um, and then it's still dosed with you know, the L-citrulline has some beta alanine itself, L-tyrosine, taurine, so get some good focus and good blood flow. And then when I add in the, the extra beta alanine and pump, it uh, makes for a pretty dang good session. So that's been a strategy at least, is get a little more wild for these leg days. Now, I think they still, they may or may not have this one in stock. They do run out pretty quickly with the Davage line. But the, uh, the other flavors of Davage Pre, I believe if I'm not mistaken, are all similarly dosed with the same ingredients as this uh, Chris's Secret stuff. I think that's just the, just the flavor name. And then uh, if they do have this in stock, it'll come with a red lid. Just kind of OCD, so I had an extra white lid laying around. I, uh, I'm not saying they should have sold it with a white lid. I'm just saying <laughs> it looks looks pretty good. With, <laughs> with... That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't I can't look at the camera right now because Zach's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, man. Yeah. It looks good. <laughs> you saved the whole tree work out of it. Get close up. Give him some give him some B-roll here. Look at that thing. All I'm saying, that's not the same in red. You know, that shot is the same. Color, colors aside, uh, if you do want to pick anything up, links will be in the video description as usual. And uh, since they are the sponsor, Code Merc does support the channel as well. And uh, that'll save you a bit. Usually covers shipping plus a little bit more. So appreciate you guys who order it, but really I'm glad you guys are getting some good quality stuff too. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna down this. I'm gonna also take, because it's leg day, this guy with me, which is the uh, the intro workout carbo carbohydrate, uh, which is mainly just flavored cluster dextrin. Uh, so a quick digestion carb, I'll start sipping on that pretty much with the first set of the workout I like to. So I feel like by the end of it, I'm starting to absorb some of what I'm drinking. So over time, I've been adding a little bit of weight to these and uh, I feel like 20, 25, still sit there on that first rep for 10 or so seconds just to fe really feel the stretch, kind of open my calf up and then going a bit lighter than what I can do for the first working set is kind of doubles as a warm up as well. Now I'm able to really just connect with my calf and contract hard every single rep. Whereas when I start adding some weight, that's a little bit harder to do, at least from the start. So. Now that I've got a good connection, I feel like I can perform it that much better going into the second set. Then I'm warmed up, I'm loose. I'm not just putting my max working weight on right from the start. So even with calves, I like to kind of warm them up just a bit before I really crush them. So similar to what I've been doing with training calves at the beginning of the workout, four sets on here, at least 20 reps each. The first 10 of the 20 reps, are a little bit more controlled, where I'm coming to a complete stretch at the bottom, squeezing up all the way, so pretty much 100%, and then giving it an extra 10, 20% kind of flex or pump at the top 
getting the weight up higher, getting a deeper squeeze into my calf, and then uh, yeah, repeating that for the first 10, and then usually around halfway, that gets hard to do effectively, which is why the back 10 are just as best I can, complete repetitions, good control, good stretch, good squeeze, and uh, yeah, I've been feeling it every set. So four of these seated, and then exact same methodology when I go over to the, uh, the standing calf raise, and somewhere in there I should have a pretty decent calf pump. All right. It's been about a minute, so we'll get to this first real tough one. get started I think one should be enough my legs are pretty warm already even after those especially those standing calf raises so I'm pushing pretty hard so one warm-up set about eight reps on here about 75 eh, percent of my working weight for the first set that should be enough even another 30 seconds or so in a, in the first of four working sets you usually just do around 10 reps here don't go quite to failure I don't know I haven't tried that I haven't tried really going to failure on multiple sets on the uh, the leg extension before going over to my first squat I don't know, I'd almost, I don't know if I could tax them. I don't know, I'd really just need to try it. I don't know if I would tax my quads too much before going into the first squat. Because usually I come in within a rep or two of failure, so I'm able to get good form. But I'm not doing like partials or anything on here. I'd rather save that for after the squat to put a little more into it. Because I think I could crush my quads on here where I'm squatting half of what I would squat even with pre-exhausting my quads before the squat. So I think the standard, at least for now, usually does me pretty good, but maybe, I don't know. If I stop getting sore, you know, then my body gets too used to this. I think then the drop sets and the partial reps, starting with one set would be, uh, could start being pretty beneficial before I squat, but this is enough stimulus for now where I'm getting out of this leg workout my quads are crushed. So maybe that's the gauge to go by. Maybe 12 on this first one. Ooh. That's good. So on here, uh, as far as the execution goes, pulling down pretty dang hard to keep my glutes planted into the, the seat. So that's keeping my legs pretty stationary. And at the same time, I'm also pushing down toward my knee to keep the bottom half of my hamstring pushed down into the seat. And then that just gives me a nice stable base where I can control each rep, squeeze up, mentally pause for a half second at the top, and then do my best to keep tension by controlling the uh, the negative portion back down. You can go a little bit heavier though. Oh, you know what? Doing the drop set on the last one. Couple sets to go before I get there. Yeah, we'll do that. Hit 10, 10 for set two and three, and then roughly, and then uh, 10 and 10 for the drop set on the fourth one. That'll mess me up pretty good. I mean, I'm, I mean, I know I'm gonna be sore because I'm sore when I even don't do that drop set. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
second before I stand up. Whew. I think on all those, at least 14 on most of those. I didn't even count that last second part of that drop set. I just did what I could. Threw some partials at the end. Whew. These squats are gonna be tough. So this is where it's nice. I like at least after pre-exhausting. We'll see next for my squat. I'm gonna go over to the Smith machine today. They got a good one here. I'm like the apartment gym. I get stuck with that like weird Smith machine where it's in a cage that moves. So it's not actually fixed, but this one's good. So I get some stability and kind of go a li little bit narrow with my stance and just light up my quads for four sets on those. It'd be hard to control a barbell right now. Plus, it, it feels better for me regardless. Oh man, that was a good one, Zach. That was a good one. So with this guy, I also like to elevate my heels a bit. And I don't, like proportionally, I'm not the tallest guy, but I do have longer legs for my height. So squatting can be a little bit strange. Shoot, my hips are damn near in my chest. So in order to help out my squat, I'll, I've been elevating my heels just a little bit. This is what, maybe half an inch, um, but just enough where I'm able to keep my torso a little more upright. Because if I don't have my heels elevated, I feel like I have to compensate by leaning my upper body forward to get the depth I want to get. So this helps me keep the depth. And then I'm still able to drive through kind of the center of my foot toward the heel, like that back half of my foot, especially on the way up out from the bottom. So if, uh, if you got some longer legs proportionally, whether you're tall or not, I recommend trying it out. Yeah, just enough there, a little bit wider than my narrow stance. Rock and roll. Oh. <sighs> 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 All right, let's see. I'm going to start the first working set. Two plates, and that should be a pretty difficult 12, especially if I slow it down and focus on squeezing my quads to drive the weight up, and we'll go from there. Much stronger, much stronger. Just adjusted my stance just a little bit. That's all I needed to do. Yeah, the second set, I think I went just a little bit too wide and just enough where I didn't connect with my quads. So I, I should have with that set. Much better. One more.
who, as I'm doing these, similar to that leg extension, I'm pulling using the handles on the bottom of the machine to pull my upper body down into the pad, which keeps my glutes and my hips planted. And then do my best to get a good depth of control, drive it up, keeping the weight. It's kind of interesting, like at the top of the, the top of the sled, the weight is more toward my heels. And then as I come down, the weight starts to transfer toward the middle of my foot. But then as I drive back up that weight, then as I approach the top, transfers back toward my heel. So if I keep it in that zone throughout, it usually means I'm keeping good tension on my quad, assuming my feet are initially in the right position. So yeah, three more of these. And then uh, I got Bulgarian, dumbbell Bulgarian split squats to finish it, which I, I haven't done in a minute. So I added them into this workout of the week from the app. And uh, well, I got to do them along with you guys who are following the app. So at this point, I'm not dreading them, but they're gonna be tough. It's been a good few leg sessions since I've done some uh, dumbbell Bulgarian, so orient myself here. So I like to load the weight on the, the inside hand as opposed to the outside hand. So when I pick this thing up, it'll be on this one. My left arm if I'm squatting with my right leg. I'm trying to do it so there's not too much glute. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit, especially getting deep, but I'm trying to keep these in my quads most, which means kind of walking my foot back a little bit, letting my uh, knee go over my toe just a bit. Ah, oh, yeah, right there. Just about 90. Ooh, come on. Come on, big guy. Be big one day. Tell you what, that when I load that weight on the inside, get some good depth. Is the outer portion of my quad firing? It's firing like crazy on my way back up, which I need. I mean, shoot, I need it all, but that in particular, because proportionally, like I mentioned, for my height, I got a bit longer legs, so naturally, it's a little bit more length there to fill out. So that sweep has never been my strong suit. I mean, shoot, I don't really consider it a sweep yet. And, who knows, maybe uh, maybe one day how this leg works, especially if this is, you know, every leg session or every week of training legs, I do set two sessions, the quad focus, and then later in the week, I do the hamstring focus, which I'll eventually cover. But every one I do, I try to raise the bar a little bit from that training. His legs were never a strong suit of mine. So maybe one day, all this leg training, will uh, I'll get to show it off, we'll see. We'll see. But for now, a couple more sets of this before I'm out of here.
Mike's almost out of battery. I am for sure almost out of battery. And uh, that's it for legs. Mine are cooked. Got a little bit of abs to do. Usually with this training, I'll do abs every other day. I try to put them on the days where the workout's either a little shorter or I feel like I'll have the energy to really do them. When they fall on leg days, you just kind of got to get them done and not really think about it all that much. It's a good challenge. Cool, man. I need some food in me. Ain't much else to say. That's a quad focus leg session. Thanks for sticking around for another video. I'll uh, aim to put another one up next week. Appreciate you guys. But what do I know? I'm just mad.